around us. There's a lot of things going on in our center. Um, and there's a lot of things that come up around this center that that uh, I personally have a commitment to honoring all faith traditions. And I know that many of you also join me in that. <clears throat> and, uh, and at the same time, it's interesting for me to observe that what we accept intellectually <coughs> is often more difficult to practice than to contemplate. It's often, isn't it interesting to observe that what we accept intellectually is often more difficult to practice and to contemplate? So considering this idea, it is interesting for me as a teacher of spiritual philosophies, not just this one, but, a, but others as well, uh, to observe at this time of year the tensions around the Christianity. I'm surprised to see how many people have issues around the whole Jesus thing. Now, I know that culturally, that Christian viewpoints often trump other viewpoints. In fact, we might even say, some might say, trample them. And certainly, if you are Jewish or of another faith, it must feel like around this time of year that you're getting this Jesus thing stuffed down your throat. And if you're atheist, you know, you're the voice in the wilderness. So what does this teaching, this teaching, the science of mind, religious science, what does this teach about Christianity and the person known as Jesus? So <clears throat> I went looking for this passage on the internet uh, because I had uh, read it several times I couldn't remember what book I had seen it in so I googled it and I found it on the CNN blog site of all places CNN and the name of it is the Christ is a universal presence by Ernest Holmes wow. yes. so I'm just going to share it with you. Christ is the embodiment of divine sonship which has come with varying degrees of power to all people and in all ages and to every person in some degree. Christ is a universal presence. We do believe in the unique personage of Jesus that this Christ was more fully orbed than any one of whom we have record. We do believe that in the person of Jesus, more God was manifest. We also believe that Christ comes alike to each and all. There is no one particular man predestined to become the Christ. We must understand that Christ is not a person, but a principle. We must understand that Christ is not a person, but a principle. It was impossible for Jesus not to have become the Christ as the human gave way to the divine, as the man gave way to God, as the flesh gave way to spirit, as the will of division gave way to the will of unity, Jesus, the man, became the living embodiment of the Christ. So if we can look upon Jesus from this viewpoint, we shall be able to study his life as a living example. So what is more, uh, Ernest asked this, what is more inspiring than to contemplate the consciousness of a man who has the faith to stand in front of a paralyzed man and tell him to get up and walk. And to know very well that he is going to get up and walk. Or to stand in front of the tomb of a dead man and tell him to come forth. Such an example 
as this is worth something. But if the whole performance were enacted in the mind of a man entirely unique and different from us, then it would mean no more to us than studying the biography of hundreds of other men. Fortunately, we do not have to contemplate Jesus as being unique and different, for the Bible makes it plain, more than plain, that He was a man like as we are. As the human gives way to the divine, in all people, they become the Christ. As the human gives way to the divine, we, within all of us, we become the Christ. So in the case of Jesus, there was such a surrendering of an isolated will that a great, greater incarnation of the divine actually took place. The mystic Christ comes from the bosom of the unseen Father proclaiming the love of God through His own love of humanity. This from the Science of Mind, the definitive edition. So, isn't it interesting to observe that what we accept intellectually is often more difficult to practice and to contemplate. <clears throat> when I think about this, I think about within my own life the idea of, of being the living embodiment of the Christ. And as those great <coughs> metaphysicians Wayne and Garth once said, I am not worthy. I'm not worthy. Because there is that part within me, that part within me that understands that I have work to do. That part within me that as a young child recited, O oh Lord, I am not worthy to receive You, but only say the Word and I shall be healed even with the consciousness of a child. So I know that this is the consciousness that's deeply subjectified within me. I know that there are times when I fall short of radiating the glory of God. And there are many of you who probably know that about me even more than I do. <laughs> but I also know that there are times when I absolutely do. I know that there are times absolutely that you, each one of you, express God or demonstrating the Spirit of the One God right as you sit warts and all. So how do we connect the dots? Right? How to go from he's a jerk, he is God. He's a jerk. No, he's a child of God. Jerk, child of God, jerk. So we're working, you know, because if we know that our if we know that there's a power for good in the universe available to everyone and we can use it and that our thinking makes it so. These are both ideas from that teacher. That we know that we can demonstrate our greatest life now through the power of our own thinking. That's a lot more difficult to do than to say. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. It's true, yeah? yeah? It's better today than it was, yes? Yes. And if you are new and these are new concepts, I can tell you that this idea will transform your life. Regardless of what faith tradition we come from. Regardless of what faith tradition we continue to practice. Or if we're on the fence about the whole God thing. An atheist can practice the power of thought. In 
this way, this is a universal principle that is open to all. So, isn't it interesting to observe that what we accept intellectually is often more difficult to practice than to contemplate? So I spoke earlier about being uh, on the training webinar for the winter team time. And its sole function of this training is to provide a safe environment for teens. Right? This weekend, this three-day weekend, is all about teens. Not us working out our stuff for teens. Not us telling them, well, back in my day. Right? But creating a field for teens to be themselves, to be free of the confines of their place in a particular family or what their school says or even what they think about themselves. And to have a conversation about what does it mean to support a team. These are some of the things that you will have to do. So we talked about various scenarios. We talked about mandated reporting. We talked about suicide prevention. And I was cool talking about all that stuff. And then they mentioned LGBTQ. And this recovering redneck who thought he had healed from all that stuff was going, oh man, do we have to talk about this stuff in teen group? Really? I mean, I love gays now. <laughs> Isn't that enough? I love gay people, man. Marriage equality. Now I gotta do the the uh, the T's and the Q's, <laughs> right? So it's lesbian, gay, bi, transgender, or questioning, or queer. You know, it was my first time. <laughs> so I found it interesting how that came up for me. I'm gonna tell on myself right now. Because I thought I'd healed this stuff, because I have, after all, I am an evolved consciousness. <laughs> yes? yes? And yet here I am going, oh God. And yet I learned so much. I learned so much in that little 15 minute period that will not only make me a more effective youth advisor, but also make me a more effective person operating in the world that I can that I can be okay with my recovering rednekedness knowing that I am still evolving within my own thinking the next thing that occurred to me as I was contemplating this last night is this bump remember that the, the bumper stickers you've seen them around that say what would Jesus do Right? And I remember driving around like, oh God, there's those evangelicals with their bumper sticker. Right? Here, I'm a minister for crying out loud. Get over it. Right? More difficult to put into practice than to contemplate. So what does this mean? It's not that things are good or bad. It means I've got work to do. Whatever is revealed is revealed to be healed. That every opportunity in our life is an opportunity to look at what we really think. What we really think. And to heal it. You know, why, why was it easy for us to heal racism? Not that we've healed racism, but we've certainly dealt with it. Right? Well, part of it was TV. When we saw a little... Uh, black children being attacked by dogs and women and their moms and fire hose and all the very strong images that finally moved the establishment off. This is every bit as important. But it's not as obvious. Right? It's not as obvious. <laughs> So, what would Jesus do? We do believe 
that in the person of Jesus more God was manifest. We also believe that Christ comes to each and all alike. There is no one particular man predestined to become the Christ. The Christ, we must understand that the Christ is not a person but a principle. What would Jesus do? Love unconditionally. What is the great I am? The great I am is everything in this manifest world. So I'm ready to come out and say, I am gay and I'm straight. I am Jewish and I'm Christian. I'm a warrior. I'm a peacemaker. I'm a capitalist. I'm a socialist. I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I'm all of it. And that my task then is to step in to the courage and, convi of, and have the strength of my convictions of loving all people and seeing them as whole. Right? To know the principle of the Christ so fully and completely as to see beyond the tomb, to see beyond the world of conditions, and see the Christ principle within all beings. And not only just to think about it, but to do it. Right? In this moment, and the next moment, and the next moment, co connecting one millisecond of demonstrating God consciousness to the next, that goes to one second, that goes to five minutes, that goes to an hour. The days become months the months become years. So this is a teaching where we get to practice it here. We practice it here. This is the safe place. Right? It's a lot safer to talk about religious science to another religious scientist, yes? Right? But to also to be witness to the infinite power and presence of the intelligence, the life, the love that is God in expression through this manifest world. That's what it is to step into the light. That's what the principle is. To love fully and completely every person just as they are. Not for what we can get out of them. Not what we can manipulate out of them. What advancement can I get? Do I feel better then? <clears throat> in 12 step they call that Recovering from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. It's totally doable. We just have to do it. So stepping into this week, we're going to be hearing Merry Christmas, goodwill towards all men, and people are going to really mean it. And so are we. And let's just take that and work it through every other day of the year as well. Thanks for listening.